we're gonna go back here and check the analysis guys uh if you're watching this um or at the time of this recording we are uh january 28th this will be coming out the 30 the 30th it'll be coming out the 30th on youtube if you're a patreon member i thank you you're getting early access to my thoughts my interpretations and my official breakdown analysis to Kollege Zeitgeist, which reaction is out, guys. I really, I really liked it. I really liked it because he is, I got this feeling, man. I got this feeling that he's trying his absolute best to be the German rapper that was like no other. I, I honestly, I feel like he is on a pure mission to go to go in the history books as this German rapper who just changed things, changed the way you look at rap as a business, changed the way you look at um, global marketing. I, 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 I mean, I, I totally admire him. Just you know, very, very much more. I always have just because of how how well he writes his songs and the, kind of the punchlines he's he's able to come up with, uh, but. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm like 90% certain we're on, we're, we're about to witness something really cool from this guy. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm excited for this year, man. If, if, if that's going to be, if that does come true, this, this, whatever this free spirit, uh, 2022 campaign is going to be, but let's go right into the analysis guys. We start out here, Asha. Man, I miss Asha. I miss Asha. I'm so sad that he left Alpha Music Empire, but you know, like they both said, bros for life. Um, just like how we saw Sayed in that video. Um, I, I'm sure they're gonna have another, they're definitely gonna have another song together. I hope uh, he's involved with this Free Spirit project. And um, I really liked Full Moon. Uh, which which worked as uh, function at the functioned as the official announcement for the Zuhat to Tape Fumf promo back in it was like May I think or maybe early October like way long ago and so I would like to see Sayed Asha and Kolega get back together uh, for another track because I think the, the the all three of them they they were always they were by far the stronger uh, Alpha signings. Asha and say they were there, you know, back when you guys think back to um, Ma, uh, the hood tape dry from uh, Monument, and you had um, this uh, Fudi uh, Macht or Macht, I think it was just called Macht, right? Uh, where he had all his signings. Ghent was obviously the worst one on there, and then Jigsaw, complete asshole, but really had actually had a lot of a lot of talent. Sorry about that, guys. Thing popping up here, uh, but Jigsaw had a lot of talent. Uh, but but through and through, Sayed and uh, Asha have the best text. They have, I think, really, really great flows and overall uh, a very cool image. So, yeah, man, I hope Asha comes back and does some shit with Kollega. So let's just look at these lines here. So Asha felt, oh, so let's, I'm going to let it play too as I read, actually. So let's go skip there. All right. Ontario, so I don't know. Can I get a trio thing going here? I'm just gonna do this here. I'm gonna pull up Deeple. So Asha fed. I had Italian. <laughs> I just had to translate some English to Italian. Some I uh, was trying to sell sell something um, online, and uh, this fucker from Italy was trying to scam me. Okay, so it is interior, it, but it's French, right? So the ashes fall from in, okay internally. Regen prasselt auf die Frontscheibe schwer. Okay, so so he's he's putting he's putting out his cigar, right? Or he's like dousing his ashes in his looks like in his um in his car as the the rain is heavily pounding the the front window or the or the or you know the, the larger uh, we, we say the windshield uh you guys i guess you say 
um, Frontscheibe, or you can say it. Fuller is Cartier from Concessionaire. Again, Concessionaire, I guess, does that mean auction? Or a place where they sell concessionary licensee, okay, concession holder. So somebody who is a, an official watch dealer, I guess. Nice. Bond register. Sorgt for Mon Dennis. Flair. Mon Dennis. Mon Dennis Flair. Wie ein Bond. Mon Dennis Flair. Swanky. Oh. Oh, and then this is just English. Flair, like, like swag. Like swaggy. Yeah, man. Oh, this is a cool line. And a Bond, bond villain, right? Or a Bond... Right? Like, a, I think... Uh, director... Oh! Oh, like a Bond director. Sorked. So he's like... He's, he's, he's constantly looking... Or he's constantly acquiring... Oh, it provides. Wow. So he's providing this like swaggy flavor he's like providing this swaggy flavor like a like a director of a james bond movie would do um and so that's kind of his mystique that's like his image that he's he's really doubling down on uh recently which uh, i think is his best image we can agree and it is probably you know you could just call it the zuhata tape or the zuhata aura right so nice imagery man just the first couple lines dude very impressive just with the um the, you know the descriptive nature of the 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 rain he could have said he could have said is he could have said is as regnet auf die die frontscheibe but he said passet passet i don't i've never even seen this word before but i can just imagine it means like to to like come down and like smack right to patter yeah man i mean like just such beautiful writing like very very elegant writing and then it ties neatly in with this 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 whole bond um the, the, the Bond theme. And then, so, Gajak from den Geister dieser Zeit. Okay, so, um, and here's, so here's really what we see as the first, we see this as the first, um, you know, implication uh, or, or meaning of the song, you know, because, of course, the song is called Zeitgeist, but Gajak von den Geister dieser Zeit, which I, I like how he says this, um, because he's saying he's chased from it, or, or it's, it's, it's uh, chasing him. Right, almost to say like he's he's of course he's tempted, and he probably feels like if if it were you know if it were up to him to break his his code, break his his honor, and and bend for the the you know the streaming algorithms like uh, so many do, he could probably you know sub substantially increase his his profits. However, he chooses to go different routes with like all these businesses we talked about in the reaction, which are much harder, right? I mean, anybody could just buy a ghostwriter and pump out millions of streams. Apparently, that's like what a lot of people do now. Uh, but he's got he's got that Kunish discipline, right? Where he he fights that man. He he that thing that thing is like right there, like saying like, come on, come on, you could do it, come on. Um, but he fights that. He stays true to himself. Uh, you know the the hardest. You know the hardest things bring the best rewards, and in the in the opposite is is even more so true, right? And so ich gebe keinem von euch high five, aber schlage wieder ein. Oh, ich gebe keine. Okay, <laughs> that's funny. So I'm not giving I'm not giving any of you guys high fives, but I'm gonna punch you. In <laughs> Streaming bitches in den charts wissen Bescheid. SSV. Oh, dude, that's so funny. Streaming bitches. So I missed this in the reaction. Uh, that's why I like to come and do this sometimes and uh, kind of go over the lines to see what what he's really saying. Streaming bitches in den charts. Of course, Adele, she's a streaming bitch. I guess in his words, you could say that. Wissen Bescheid, es ist wie Adele. Die fetten Jahre sind vorbei. Oh, man, it's such a funny line. It's such a funny line. So he kind of grabs you with his humor there. I always, I've always loved that. And uh, it's like Schmutz von gestern. Okay, so he's just like, he's saying like, uh, again, just to say like the zeitgeist of 2021 is over and he's going to push forward, you know, forward to 2022 and kind of create his own movement. 
zeigt, dass man dem König wieder Luft zu fächert. He said in this in the video I noticed he did this, so I guess like blow away, fanned, yeah, fanned away. Okay, zeigt, dass man dem König wieder Luft zu fächert. Okay, so he's saying. The king has never left, but his servants have, and it's time that they come back and give him the respect that he deserves. That's a really beautiful way of saying that. That's what I get from there. Trag zum Schutz die Kevlar. So he's, you know, for protection, he's wearing that bulletproof vest, which, of course, comes back in the hook. We'll get there. Um, and dann kriegt der Boss mal Herzschmerz. Dann durch Brustschusstreffer durch seinem Luxus Zwetter. So, it's possible we have a metaphor here, um, because he's talking about wearing the Kevlar for protection. Now, literal Kevlar, I don't know. Symbolically, I feel like he could be talking about, again, like his overall image, the the, the empire uh, and, and the fan base that he's built up is quite literally his... Um, his his Kevlar and this hat schmatz is the you know the heart pain the the chest pain uh from the the brust schuss treffer like when you get shot in the chest wearing a bulletproof vest it's very it's it's widely known that it's it's it won't kill you but it, it could easily break a rib it could it could actually still hospital uh hospitalize you uh just because of the impact you know some uh, bullets carry quite a bit of weight um and high velocity uh, can can cause some damage regardless of penetration and so I think this could be a, a larger metaphor that's just what that's my opinion uh, for again the zeitgeist kind of kind of kind of attacking you know everything that he's built this this like these like all of these rappers all of these artists coming out of nowhere getting so popular in two years if we see a lot of this uh, on the other side of, in, of the aisle in America when Eminem talks about um in this song caterpillar which i i do plan on doing an analysis of that because i really like that um i really like that song but he talks about being a caterpillar and how the, a lot of the older school rappers aren't happy with the newer generation um and you know i think this is a debatable thing we might we might make another uh video for this topic but the old school rappers you guys need to know a lot of you younger guys and i know i'm i'm one of those younger guys although i would say i'm kind of an in-betweener the old school rappers really had to fight and battle to become relevant um, when because you could only distribute your 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 music through CDs and God forbid if you were in the 90s man it wasn't CDs it was these little cassettes and and so if it wasn't a cassette you had to know somebody like a label uh, or a radio station for your stuff to be heard and so it was like it the, the, the grind was really nothing to be fucked with and so there was almost it almost served as this great filter for bad talent it was it was just not anybody could open up a spotify account and start posting songs right um, and then hire a writer and then get known like that someone like Colega or someone like eminem who's been in the the rap game you know rap industry for 20 30 years eminem is yeah eminem has been in it for like 35 years now uh so these guys really struggled and so the fan base that he's developed over these 20 or so years, 15 years, I think 15, right? 2005, you would say, is his first uh, first real uh, public debut. The fan base he's built for the last 15 years acts as his Kevlar. I think that's what he's saying here. Acts as his Kevlar against the zeitgeist, and he's not going to fall victim to the zeitgeist, even though it's pounding him in the chest, trying to push him down, saying that, like, there are artists that are way more popular than him. They get way more streams, like no doubt. Like Kolega is not one of the most streamed artists, but he is the one of the most talented, if not the most talented. And so it's just this this conundrum that he has to just take it, right? He's got to take that that fact, pound to the chest, and say, "I don't, I don't fucking care, man. I'm not gonna change who I am just because some some lesser rappers are getting more attention than me." Uh, and so. That's, that's that's such good writing, man. That's such good writing here. Um, you know, and then again, he just ties in with the Luxus sweater to, to go back to his his bond, uh, his 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 swaggy his swaggy bond uh, image, his Um It's just it's so brilliant, man. It's so brilliant. 
Um, and I, and I, and then, so, and so, Desole, mein Leben ist bald Prison Break. So, uh, Desole was a song I did react to with my girlfriend, actually. It was from, I think it was from Nemo. Sorry, okay, it's, oh, it's French. It's, so, it says, sorry. Uh, mein Leben ist bald Prison Break. So here it is. So actually, I feel good about this line also because I wasn't sure what I was saying sounded kind of like far reaching, but I think it's actually this is actually going to kind of reinforce that. Mein Leben ist bald prison break. Denn ich werde ständig vor Gericht zittert wegen Tischgebet. So he's standing before Gericht, standing before the judgment, right? I'm pretty sure Gericht means like court hearing or judgment um yeah tribunal court of law and so going back to this uh whole uh schutz die kevlar and the boss mal den hat um he's he's like trembling he's he's feeling the the pain of 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 kind of like seeing his empire um just not crumble but but be less effective i guess in the face of uh these other streaming bitches he calls them and he's sooner or later he's gonna I, he's saying like judgment day is really coming um it, or this is all coming this this is odd so i'm spitze um to come and werden right uh he's trembling for before the tish gebet so this is a word play here i want to just make sure i know what this means because it could totally shatter my whole meaning grace ah oh sitiert Sitiert means to cite, to pray. Quoted. Oh man, that's that's good. So, um, my Leben ist bald prison break. The show, obviously, the old show. Um, then ich werde ständig. I just want to double check. Ständig, ständig. I'm pretty sure it just means like he's staying. Okay. Oh. Permanent, actually, not what I thought it meant. I thought it meant like to stay strong, to stand, to stand in a, you know, stand up for yourself. Uh, so then he okay, permanently. Oh my God! So he's gonna be permanently quoted, uh, in front of the, you know, tribunal. So almost like attacked, like might be a reference to the cancel culture, uh, like tishkebet, like a like a prayer, right? So he's comparing himself to, um, he's comparing himself to to like uh, like a like a like a prayer from the from the Bible, right? So back to back, really, 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 really cool lines, man. Really nice lines. So off the villa liegt eine Schicht von Schnee, so like a layer of snow. Um, I love this word. I've always loved this word in German. I don't know. Some words are just beautiful to me. Schicht, um, Oberschicht. I think is what I first heard it. Obashish, you know, like upper class. Um, auf der Villa liegt ein Obash... Uh, <laughs> just confused myself. Liegt eine Schicht vom Schnee. Snobis macht schizophren. Jene wo... Oh. So he's like, the show business makes you schizophrenic. And we have some French here. Yeah, why don't we just go over here? I don't want to discuss. Wow. Okay. So he doesn't want to talk about it. It's interesting. So <clears throat> on the surface, in my first, you know, in my first reaction, I was like, you know, good lines. Sounds like good lines. Decent me meaning. But when you really peel back the text, it's 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 almost like a. It's almost like he's ser he's self like uh, you know, self therapeuting himself as if to to kind of like kind of tell us all what's going on in his mind that he feels he feels like he's attacked he feels like everything he's worked for is in jeopardy and now in this year more than ever he needs to step up and go full gas and whatever his definition of full gas was before he needs to double it and i i think that's kind of what he's saying here and he's saying that then wird because again the speculation ständig vor Gericht zitiert. He's going to be cited. He feels like he's going to be under scrutiny soon. Um, and this this whole showbiz thing 
turns some, you know, uh, makes schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenic um, people, meaning it's it's just a fucked up business, and you got to be really strong, um, and you got to be a free spirit if you wanna if you wanna uh, persevere and not follow the zeitgeist. So. I, I, I like I, I really like this whole me the whole message here is really nice and so here here we go he's got a uh, English slash German hook black on black blah blah blah, blah bulletproof vest again which he mentioned before the the uh, the Kevlar um, bulletproof vest this is uh, really popular in rap right, right right rappers talk about wearing the bulletproof vest but I think in Colega's case here it, it does serve for a bigger metaphor autobahn fast lane uh, on a speed limit just really nice mixing of, of of english and german he's not he's not going like one english line one german line one english line he's actually um blending the two pretty seamlessly which were which actually in the when i first in the reaction I, I was like i wasn't even sure what i was listening to and i think that's 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 great laid back panzer glass bends mid to finger and then side guys so again he's talking about like he the the guy does not wear bulletproof vests, and I can guarantee you he's not in uh, driving in Benz, in a Benz that um, you know is bulletproof glass uh, or tank glass. But the, the, the but the, but how he follows these all up here, how he follows that up with the bit of finger and zeitgeist, it, it just really makes me believe that this is just one big metaphor. Um, he's 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 protecting himself, and he's trying to protect his legacy. And whatever that's going to be, we're, whatever that protection is going to be, we're seeing it come. And I think that's kind of what he's doing with all of the different businesses. He's extending into other businesses uh, just because he's, I think he's worried about where the rap scene is going. And I think he's honestly afraid that, that rappers like him, ones who really put time and effort into the craft, are becoming lesser and less rewarded. And they have to diversify into... You know, like his supplement company, his boss transformation. Um, he he made a film company, dude, Alpha Film, uh, and and then now the NFTs. You know, he's he's thinking more. He's thinking a lot bigger. Um, and I think all we can all take that as a lesson, guys. Um, me personally too. It's kind of why I have this YouTube channel. It's not really what I do full time. Although someday I'd hope it would be. Uh, but it's 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 a supplement, right? It's like almost like. If one thing fails, you gotta have other things to, to to look forward to and and back you up. You can't have one job, one person that pays you. Uh, but I love this. We have the Uba Zet song here. Um, yeah. So don't worry, guys. Don't need to read genius. Das Jägertier am Start. I mean, der Jägertier am Start. So die Welt ist erblindet. So uh, stop it, genius. It's so freaking annoying. Uh, here we go. Part two, which is the final part. It's quite a long one. Um, and again, maybe maybe we make this two parts. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how long this takes after editing. Uh, but you know, the world is blinded. New Babylon, Satanic Kingdom. So, I think this is in reference to kind of like why again wider implications of of the uh, cancel culture and kind of like uh, what people are tending to focus on nowadays. And I don't want to get too much into that because I don't want to be canceled myself. You know, uh, but things are kind of weird. Um, I'm a tennis fan and a tennis player and a tennis coach. Just look into uh, what's going into Australia uh, with Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic was a complete asshole uh, with uh, with how he handled going to this like press conference with COVID. But the fact that he he's banned from Australia for three years because he didn't get vaccinated um, that 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 baffles me, man. It's we're we're living in a time of extremes, and that's just never it's never good. Um, things are, should not be extreme. Things things should be nuanced, like gray, black, white, no gray. Um, and so I, I think that's what he's hinting at. Here bist du schnell auf den Index. They censor me in German. Yeah. So here we go. He's taught he's taking directly direct shots at the cancel culture and kind of the the you know the, the 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 woke mob, so to speak, the people that are just fascinated with destroying other people's successes. And it's sad, man. It's sad, dude. You, you see people want to cancel people all the time. So he said, they censored me in German, so I'm going to tell them in English. Vampire Empire. I like this. I like this. Sucking out our life force. So the Vampire Empire, you know, this 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 woke, this woke mob um, is just sucking the blood, sucking the life out of, you know, sucking the life out of 
the 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 alphas the people who are trying to like take control and responsibility for their own lives and make a make a something good out of it um whereas you have most other people who are who try to rip it down and take it for themselves um i i, I really respect this message here um and then knights of the apocalypse behold the white horse he is the white horse that's cool man so like i said before this makes me feel good because i i that was i was going out on a limb there he is definitely going to make a big push this year to diversify and become kind of this guy to say like hey guys we can stand up to kind of these like backwards institutions that that have lost their ways and remain free and remain um like boss huffed and uh, i love i love that so he's gonna be the white horse of the apocalypse of course I, uh, this is, this is a, I think it's a biblical term, right? The white horse is kind of like the, the glimmer of hope. The, the, letting everybody know that that the dark times are, are coming to an end. And then child loss lies spread like wild moss. So child loss lies spread like wild moss. Hmm. Let the wise Lord guide me on the right course. Course, moss. What is this guy? Shereen David? Course, moss, tank top. No, just kidding. Kidding, Kollege, ich liebe dich. <clears throat> Aus ein Bruder. Met the devil in his purest form with his unique horns, like unicorns. Oh, unique horns. He said eunuch. In the, so in the song, he said eunuchs. This is why it's good to look. So I met the devil in his purest form with his unique horns, like unicorns. So comparing. I, so I, I want to take a look at this too, guys. He's comparing the devil to a unicorn based on the horns itself. I think that's kind of a sign of the times we're saying just because like a unicorn has horns doesn't make it the devil. I mean, he's almost saying, remember, he called himself the white horse of the apocalypse. So he's almost saying people who are trying to cancel and tear down what is, you know, tear down things that are maybe hurtful to some or offensive to some, but overall, not, not just not really harming the world on like a like a large scale, um, doesn't make them the devil, right? It doesn't make the devil like just because you know a unicorn has horns doesn't mean we need to kill it in the name of the you know in the name in, in the name in the name of like uh, this satanic um, uh, crucifixion. I mean, it's it's uh, again. I think it's a really nice line. He's doing that on purpose. He offered me a deal to be a newly born music star. I left him and his contract rudely torn so there we go um he he basically said you know that okay so this is actually <clears throat> okay i get this now so i was wrong i maybe i was wrong about the whole um the whole killing the unicorn it's actually um he's talking about the zeitgeist here right the uh, the zeitgeist is the devil it's it's this tempting easy shortcut to fast lots of money right that but but the, the thing is is like guys like i think he's saying here um you know he he tore that he tore that contract uh, um um the he that's a vertrag like uh like asha said in in history uh he left it the you know the contract rudely torn basically saying um yeah it looks great you're gonna make me tons of money this year but what happens next year and the next year right things that come fast usually leave leave fast and so he's going to stick to this empire that he's been building slowly and um you know to, to the things that have already brought him success and he's not going to change switch things up just because uh you know times have changed time to change but here we go speaking of change time to change the game like a skyrim mod uh, another nod to gaming i love when he does this he's obviously a um has is somewhat of a gaming fan he had this. Uh, he showed that. He showed that side of him off in that soccer. Um, just relating to all different types of games, you know, um, FIFA, FIFA, Warzone, Fortnite, all types of stuff. I think like even Rocket League. He went that the enemy of Skyrim here. Uh, you can't block God's vengeance with a lightning rod, like Nimrod and his king. Wait, what? You can't block God's vengeance with a lightning rod. Uh, Im Tanach der Bibel, im Krane wandte Held und König, der seinem Namen nach starke Held rebelliert gemäß, gemäß der frühen jüdische Literatur gegen Gott. So, 
Um, interesting. Uh, Nimrod and his kingship fighting God. So I guess Nimrod was a guy who thought he could fight God with lightning. Um, so here's Kolega kind of like preaching us some uh, religious quotes, which is really nice because he's not telling us to be religious. He's just kind of, you know, the conveying the value that's there. Um, you, you can't fight. You can't fight what's what's certain, right? You can't fight what's already coming. Um, that's icing on top, like the Himalayan rocks. Nice, 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 nice. So Himalayan rocks, uh, the mountains, right? The the snow, the north, the uh, northeastern, uh, northeastern Asian uh, mountain range, I think, is the Himalayas. And uh, of course, on top, there's constantly uh, snow, like icing on a cake, icing on top. Uh, it's a saying we say we have in English. That's just like the you know, that's just the icing on top. It's kind of like, uh, it's a way to say, it's a way to say, um, it just adds to, it just adds to the fact. It just adds to the, the, the problem that's already there. It's like, it's an emphasis. That's what it is. It's an emphasis. Okay. They let the old world die. It's time to resurrect again. Um, the zeitgeist and the cancel culture. I think this is the, the things he's really talking about here, how he's going to stand up to them. Um, and how they let the old wor world die. He's he misses that old world, but it, it looks like he's he's okay with moving on and building a better one. Because you'll never catch a giant with a lion trapper's net. Hmm. I let him sweat like a rifle to their heads. Storm the building. See my enemies. They flee over the fire ladder steps. I ain't soft like Kanye. Always whining on his tracks. Hope he finds back to his ex like with pirate treasure maps <laughs> so so this is gr uh, grammatically this is wrong uh just want to point that out hope he finds back to his ex i mean you said uh, hope he f hope he finds his way back to his ex right that's what that's what would make sense hope he finds back to it just doesn't make sense but it's fine nonetheless i get it uh it's hilarious yes uh, Kanye West is mm, get it going through a divorce with Kim. Kim is with this comedian Pete David. Uh, the whole thing is hilarious, uh, but who cares? And we got. See, I got no time for that. Steady piling up those stacks. Smiling, getting violent with an iron dagger set. Okay, I got him hooked like a. Oh, I got him hooked like a Nike sweater dash. So. I got them hooked. Like I got them hooked to my my content. Like they're they're attracted to it. They can't get away because um, people love it. Um, and you know, hooked. It's just it's, it's not something we say as as in like you're you're almost like addicted to something. Or I'm I'm hooked. Um, I'm I'm really into it. I can't stop listening. I can't stop you know consuming whatever that is. And then the the Nike sweater. I'm not wearing Nike today. Uh, the Nike sweater. The Nike thing is like shaped like a hook, right? Uh, which it doesn't look like they have the annotation here, but it looks like a hook. Like, I'm just going to hook you, you know, like a fish. Very cool. Uh, Blitz Ataka? Blitz Ataka? Thunderstorm Flash? Gangsters on steroids. Not shuddering with death. So is that him just kind of saying, like, he's a gangster on steroid? Um, I guess. Uh, transporting heroin. Like that Wonder Woman jet. Oh, that's what he said. That's nice, dude. So, um, a heroine obviously is a female, female version of a hero. Uh, or uh, if you're a superhero and you're a male, you're a hero. If you're a female, you're a heroine. Um, but then he says, uh, transporting heroin again in reference to the gangsters on steroids. Gangsters transport heroin. Uh, but in the movies, in the, the DC movies, Wonder Woman has a jet and she brings around her band of womenly, you know, women, women, women fighters, right? So she's literally transporting heroines, uh, which is so cool. So cool. Nice little punchline there. You bring that quarter million check. Dopamine effect. Check. Nice. Nice. So dopamine effect, you know, uh, actually... I actually spoke about this guys on my uh Nachbeben analysis which is on the it's the very first it's like the cover video for my channel page i kind of went into it like like the dopamine effect which I, I think most people kind of know what it is anyway i'm not gonna go into it here but go go check it out on my um on my channel's uh 
the, the, the not craven analysis if you guys want to kind of understand what that dopamine chemical is uh filthy rich even though i'm laundering my cash oh my god this is probably the best line filthy rich uh filthy rich is something we say obviously is when somebody is so freaking rich we say filthy rich i don't know why but filthy when you isolate it from actually being rich filthy means dirty schmutzig um uh, it's, it's, it's schmutzig. That's all. That's the only word I can think of. Uh, filthy means schmutzig. But he says, even though I'm laundering my cash. So the double, the wordplay here comes in with laundering. Laundering my cash. Actually, you know, it means when you have a business. And again, transporting heroin. I mean, this. He's not just throwing wordplays in here just for the the sake of it. He's actually built. He started building up this wordplay three lines ago you see that he started he started building up this really really beautiful wordplay uh three lines ago i'm gonna tell you what the wordplay is uh i'm laundering my cash um guys laundering money has to do with um cleaning your money uh when you have illegal money coming in from drugs or prostitute or human trafficking god forbid um you 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 can't just take it to a bank because they're gonna be like, where'd you get this money? And you're gonna be like, well, I, uh, you know, I found it. No, uh, you know, you, you, when, you, when you make a lot of money illegally, you you, you create what's called, the, you know, these front businesses. Um, <clears throat> in this case, he's claiming to uh, have have a, a laundering business, which um, could be anything from like, literally a washing, uh, a, a laundromat or a trash company, which is what like the Italian mobs used to do in the earlier uh 20th century but <clears throat> when you put your money through these businesses you, you take the illegal money put it in a in a legitimate business that's recognized by the you know the government and you pay your taxes and then say yes we're making all of this money from our legitimate business and then you bring it to the bank and that's called cleaning your money or in other words laundering your money you take dirty money you clean it through the laundering process bring it to the bank and check dopamine effect right so very very nicely done here colega uh filthy rich is the big one here filthy rich nice little english saying launder in my cash so he's like you guys get that that's it so it's it's really really nice and so uh i never 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 ever have they caught us in the act i got goons who turn assassins as soon as they have Brought their daughters into bed. Okay. Got goons who turn assassins. As soon as they have brought their daughters into bed. So, um, okay. They had, um, ah, okay. So, um, jemand auf genius, jemand auf genius glaubt, das ist, um, auf die Zuhälter Tracks angelehnt. Um, aber, ja, es ist so wie, um, his, you know, his crew of, gangsters goons goons are like thugs goons are like uh people who hang around you and do the dirty work like like if you're like someone who's like rich and you own a mafia clan you're the boss you don't go and kill people you send your goons or if they somebody owes you money you send your goons to, to take that money and maybe you have to beat someone up and then get that money uh but then he says they turn into a they turn into assassins as soon as they have brought their daughters into beds again um I guess he, he's extorting people through, like, I, I don't really know here, actually. I just turning them into prostitutes. Goons who turn into assassins as soon as they brought their daughters into bed. I think he's just, like, he's just, like, extorting, um, he's getting people's daughters and turning them into prostitutes. It's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very honorable business. Uh, I let you ponder upon death while I'm at poker stacking chips. While I'm at poker stacking chips, getting saved on the river like moses as a kid so apparently moses was plucked from the river i didn't know this is this biblical wait what polka this news the river is the letzte gemeinschaft gemeinschaftskarte die beim polka aufgedeckt wird oh shit so mit oh shit so that's a poker so I don't know anything about poker. Um, so. Uh, 
I'm gonna learn about it here. Uh, with most poker games, there are multiple rounds. Uh, in games like Texas, Hold'em, Omaha, River is a very important round. It can make or break the hand for you. So here we will tell you more. Okay, what is a river? Um, for example, the river in poker is the name given to the final betting round. So the, 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 the river is the, is the last round in poker. This is essentially um, betting round text that adds to the river, meaning as it shows the progression of the community cards in the game of poker. Fuck off. Since the river in poker is final betting round. So... Yeah, it has actually nothing to do with... The origin has nothing to do with Moses, so that's just an original line from Colega. So, the river is the final line. Um, <clears throat> sorry, guys, I got it. <clears throat> so, the river is the final round in poker, apparently, just what I from what I looked up. And he's getting saved on the river, like Moses as a kid. And so apparently Moses must have been saved as a kid on the river. Um, again, nice little, nice little punchline here to just talk about how uh, he he plays poker as a hobby. It's a kind of a, it's like a mafioso thing, right? It's just like kind of a tough guy thing to do. I don't play poker because I'm not a tough guy. I guess that's why. You see, we learn things every day. Kid, nobody gave me roses as a kid. All I've ever seen was people dying from overdoses as a kid. I love this here. Like I said in the reaction, you have kid, 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 uh, and then, isn't there another one? No, I guess not. Um, but inside, roses, Moses, overdoses, very nice. Uh, you have two rhyme schemes going on here if you want to count the kid on the end. Oh. I don't debate, I let money talk. And this is something like the calm before the storm. So I guess he's talking about this movement. This song that he's doing is the calm before the storm. He's going to resurrect the industry or resurrect something. He's he's standing up against the zeitgeist, this, the current cultural um, progression towards what I think a lot of people can agree is, is, is uh, uh, a little dangerous, a little concerning. Um, institutions are crumbling. Uh, we can argue over that in a different video, uh, but I, I, I agree. I agree with everything he's saying here and, and his his speculations into um, the wider like socioeconomical um, implications of cancel culture and kind of what that means. Uh, again, I'm not going to get really into detail there, but it's a, it's a topic that I've been really interested in. I'd say the better half of the last last year. Uh, and then he goes on to say, "Haters eat their hearts out like a zombie horde." So. Um, eat their hearts out guys is an english saying as well so he's using so kind of like um kind of like what he does in german already uh he he really um is just taking all of these these idioms and redewendungen from english uh and is doing the same thing with the punchlines right so uh because that's kind of like what is the, the the core of rap just kind of playing with language and playing with words to indicate that you think someone will feel great jealousy or regret about something or uh eat your heart out will suffer from excessive longing especially for someone or something unattainable okay so <clears throat> you're saying basically uh yeah eat your heart out um they're they're basically jealous okay so when somebody eats their heart out they're 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 jealous of something they don't have or they see something that they they know that it's going to take a lot of work it's going to be really hard to get somebody has already gone through that process like colega who stands there before him and so they're kind of taking this shortcut this zeitgeist um maybe to cancel him so they can get over him uh and that's because i'm not a pussy who's afraid of doing things i haven't done before um and i haven't i ain't never lying or snitching never <laughs> snowman in spring see that white boy dripping i love that line to close it out uh, like I explained in the reaction, snow snowmen are white. In spring, it gets warmer. They start to melt. Dripping is another, you know, saying in rap, in, in usually uh, English American rap, saying you have a lot of diamonds and you're a lot of chains, and so you're dripping. You're dripping. You're icy. Um, and a white boy, he's white. He's a white boy in a uh, largely non-white uh, genre. That's hip hop. Ice cold sipping in the Learjet. Time zone switching. Mana always had to fight for a living. And this is really 
this could really just sum up the whole song guys uh, the way he ends this here no special word plays no crazy vocab i just i had to fight for a living um and that's kind of like the the summation of who he is and what he believes in like you're you're gonna have to fight for everything you believe in uh even when things get hard um and things and in, in, in the easy the easy solution may feel um uh like you know uh, so, something that you you might just like reach out and grab quickly at that time and uh he's saying like you, you, you can't do that man you gotta like to, oftentimes the best results are um at the end of the path less traveled or we say the beaten path right you gotta uh, often you gotta take the beaten path um to 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 find that that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow i'm just throwing so many freaking <laughs> idioms at you guys because colega got me fired up here but anyway guys um thanks for watching if you guys made it all the way through here make sure you definitely do give a thumbs up make sure you do a subs uh you, you hit that subscribe button because uh personally i love colega and um I know I'm one of the few Americans, if not the only Americans out there that really identifies as an alpha, right? Alpha gang. Um, and definitely check out my other stuff from him, guys. I have a whole Colega playlist. You guys can check that down in the description below. And if you want to kind of get access to uh, these translations and these, um, these, these analyses ahead of time, make sure you go check out my patreon we're going to be building a really cool community there this year uh kind of like colega 2022 for me is going to be um i'm trying to make it one of the biggest years uh for me kind of in my life i'm going to be trying to do some things that i've never done before and that i have no experience in and i'm going to take them on head on head on i'm going to go right the you know uh within kopf durch die wand as you guys would say uh but that's all i'll say on that now i don't want to disclose anything i don't want to make any false promises and i will see you guys tomorrow in the stream saturday 1 p.m 19 or german time guys thank you so much for your support and i will see you in the next one peace